All right, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go through um, the mythics first and then the rares, and I'm just going to point out the ones that are constructed playable, click on them, back out, whatever. Uh, I'll start with the... Because uh, I don't really care about how playable they are in limited. It's just I play only constructed on in historic and, and standard, so uh, that's what I generally care about. So, um, Bang sponsorship please hashtag not sponsored but by chipotle all right excuse me intrepid adversary this is a whole cycle um and i'll just say all of them are playable but i think the white one is the best one uh intrepid adversary one white one colorless Human Scout, Lifelink. When Intrepid Adversary enters the battlefield, you may pay one one in a white any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many Valor Counters on Intrepid Adversary. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each Valor Counter on Intrepid Adversary. Three, one. Uh, if I didn't say it was Human Scout. So... This is the best. This one's the best one because it only costs two, and it's a three one, which is good rate for two, and you only have to pay two. The rest of them are uh, different between two cost or three cost, and two here or three here, mostly three. But there's another one that has two. But in standard, white at, right, white aggress aggressive decks want good one and two drops, and this fits, fits the bill. And this whole cycle is basically scalable. Scalable meaning that you can play this on two, you can play this on four, you can play this on six, and it's never, it's never bad at any point in the game. Uh, this one being the best one, I think all white decks are playing four of these. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness, this fucking, this fucking bot, bro. And it's already gone. So, for those who don't know, Haas 00312 is a bot. It's a hate bot. Ironically, it's now the name is un is Unstoppable. Which is ironic because every one of these names either gets blocked or suspended or, uh, or deactivated. And... There is no way to... Ooh, I can actually block this one. Alright, cool. Never mind. Um, I thought there was a report thingy, but that's uh, fine. Alright. So... The white one, best one. You're probably playing four of them. In Historic, you can rebuy this for uh you can rebuy this with Luris and you can rebuy it and because this is not a a part of the casting cost or additional cost or added to the mana value you can pay this as many times as you want when you cast it off Luris in historic uh and it being able to be cast in multi kicker essentially will be really good in the Luris decks, whichever one plays it in the white aggressive decks. But basically, in the Luris decks, you're playing a bunch of ones and twos anyway, and it's a human. So that'll be relevant. Uh, also relevant, um, if you have this with... No, that doesn't count. Never mind. Uh, I was going to say hard and scales, but that doesn't count. You have to pro you have to proliferate. Uh, Spectral Adversary. One blue... One color is uh, spirit flash flying. Whenever spectral adversary enters the battlefield, you may play. You may pay one and a one and a blue any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many plus one plus one counters on spectral adversary. Then up to that many other target artifacts, creatures, and or enchantments phase out. Uh, uh, two one. So in in Historic, this will be good in the Spirits decks uh, to get that final... Um, you can protect your own stuff from from removal. You can phase out opponent stuff to get in the last hit if they have flyers. 
and it gets bigger and with spirits having a couple of lords putting a plus one plus one counter and they get you out of the range of lightning helix if you have two lords out um and just being able to have another flash threat is relevant i don't know how good this is in, in standard however there is a spirits lord in standard but it costs three and i don't know how good spirits or flyers or whatever are going to be good so it really is format context contextual and how good this will be but i imagine that blue decks that are playing a flash strategy or instances mostly instance and flash threats will probably play at least a couple uh historic i imagine the same thing because this isn't like a world beater but there's no way that you're not playing at least a couple of these um in a pinch at six mana you can save your own stuff while this does die, because you have to target other stuff, you can't target itself. But being able to target one or two creatures or one or two permanents that are that are that might die or whatever or might get removed, then you'll be able to phase them out and they come back during your turn because it, you're doing it at the end of somebody else's turn. So phasing phasing out and phasing back in is on the next on your next turn. I think is how it reads. So, um, not the best, but not the worst. <laughs> Tainted Adversary, one black, one colorless, zombie, two, three, death touch. When Tainted Adversary enters the battlefield, you may pay two colorless and a black any number of times. When you, when you, when you do, uh, oh, you may pay this cost one or more times, put that many, plus one, plus one counters on Tainted Adversary, then create twice that many, 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens with Decayed. Decayed is a new mechanic in this set. And Decayed basically means that whenever they attack, uh, sacrifice them at the end of combat. Uh, and they can't block. So, um, this being a 2-3 two, for 2 or two three for 2 with Death Touch is sort of above rate. And that gives it the, uh, the 2 or the 3 cost instead of the 2. But this basically is a five or scaled at five and basically gives you um, for those that remember playing zombies back in 2019 where this is basically Liliana's Mastery where you cast the, the Liliana's Mastery. It's a five mana uh, enchantment that gives uh, all zombies plus one plus one and gives you two, 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 two black zombie creature tokens. They didn't have decayed though. So this will and you get a plus one plus one counter on this and then you get two zombie tokens that are basically three threes so you're basically getting nine power for five mana on a creature and i hear that people are saying this is the worst one and i'm on i'm on the i'm on the fence as this is close to one of the better ones uh because on five you're getting nine power and that could be the difference between winning and losing a game. Granted, those zombie creature tokens can't block, but you're attacking with these tokens anyway. So I, I, and their their power at the time is big enough because most creatures are at the three toughness, and when you pay the cost, this toughness becomes a four. So I, I can't imagine that this is one. This is not one of the better ones. Uh, in Historic, you're probably playing at least a couple of these. This basically allows you to not have to play Liliana's Mastery, and therefore you get a cheaper rate on a creature instead of playing a 5-cost enchantment that's a little clunky. Uh, in Standard, Zombies are going to be played, so and this is going to be in it. I am, I'm playing 4, uh, because this is basically another Lord. Uh... Or, I'm sorry, you just get, this isn't a lord, you just get two creature tokens. So, it's Liliana's Mastery, but you don't get the lord aspect, so I was sort of wrong on there. But still getting seven power on five is still more than enough. Uh, it's unfortunate that you don't get the lord aspect, but it's fine. Uh, this is very good. Bloodthirsty Adversary. One red, one colorless, vampire, haste. 2-2. Two, two. When Bloodthirsty Adversary enters the battlefield, you may pay 3 any number of times, or 2 colorless and a red. When you pay this cost one or more times, uh, put that many plus 1 plus 1 counters on Adversary, then exile up to that many target instant and or sorcery cards with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard, 
and copy them. You may cast any number of the copies without paying their mana costs. So th essentially, this is Goblin Dark Dwellers that is a modal spell. You get a 2-2 two, two for 2 with haste, which isn't bad. It's not the best, but it's not bad. And you get at 5 mana a 3-3 three, three, uh, three, three with haste that you're casting a 3 mana value or less card. So a burn spell... Uh, expressive iteration is one that comes to mind the easiest uh if you're playing vampires which is traditionally black or black red then you can get a kill spell at three or another um another type of card advantage spell so this is never dead and the more you cat or the the more it scales i think this is diminishing returns so like casting it on seven is kind of like yeah you get two cards but how many how many instant and sorcerers are you playing in your vampire deck essentially, but I'm thinking this is the best one one of, uh because it's it's going in the red deck and it's a haster and it's a never it's never dead, especially if you're playing a lot of instants and sorceries, so uh this one is in contention for being the best one with the black one, or I'm sorry. Uh, the white one's the best one. This one is in contention with being the second best one with this and the black one. Uh, I don't think you're playing this in Historic. There is there is potential, but you already have literal Goblin and Dark Dwellers in. And you're not playing multiple colors with this unless you are playing something specific. So, like, if you're playing Vampires, your traditional Vampire deck is black, white, not black, red. So, and mostly black, you're splashing a white. So splashing three, two different colors is, you just would just play something else. Primal Adversary, two colors, one green, wolf, trample, four, three. When adversary enters the battlefield, you may pay one and a green any number of times. When you pay the cost, put that many plus one, plus one counters on adversary then up to then up to that many target lands you control become three three wolf creature tokens with haste they are still lands not until end of turn i have no idea why this turns lands into wolves but sure um i'm skeptical i'm not saying this is the worst one and i'm not saying this is the best one but on rate it's fine four power for three this is like you know the same rate as bone crusher giant uh Having the three toughness dies to a lot of things in the format, but there are a lot of other removal spells that only get two. And I think this is one of those times where this is like you're getting seven power for five or eight power for five. And this is like one of those, oh, I attack with a three, three and hopefully kill you or get you close to having two threats that you can't deal with. So like the blue one's the worst one. Close to the red one, and then those three... Like, the red one's kind of, like... It's hard to evaluate, but the black one and the green one... Like, they're all playable. The white one being the best one. Uh, this one's good on rate for what a green deck wants to do. So, contextually, this is probably, like, number two, given that the green the green aggro deck is still good and has all the best creatures. But it's still hard to evaluate all these adversaries, but they're all playable. And when I say the worst one, it's still playable. You're just not playing all four... And the ones that you're playing all for are probably the ones that are better than the average ones. So I don't think this is playable in historic, given how good the three drop slot is in contention. Steel Leaf over or Steel Leaf Champion, uh, Yorvo, Old Growth Troll, which is still standard playable or still in standard, but all the three green drops are way better than this. Um. Kurtos25, appreciate the follow. Thank you for turning my open during your stay. Sir Guardian Savior, three colors, two white angel flying, 3-3. Three, three. When Sir Guardian Savior enters the battlefield, if you cast it, return up to two target creatures with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, your two drops better be good. And I mean really good. Because this, 3-3 three, three for 5... Is just not good. Um, returning the two drops is what matters here. So if you're returning uh, in historic, for example, like Thalia's Lieutenant and stuff like that or other angels, then this is fine. 
The main problem is that you have to pair them with good ones and twos. Correct. Like, but as I said, you have to you have to ensure that those two drops matter. Um. But for standard con context, I, I'm saying this is good, but those two drops have to matter. Uh, there is a black white. Is there any good black white cards? That are two or less that care about angels. I'm pretty sure there is. Not sure though. If those cards are in, then yeah, this this card will matter. But if not, I I got nothing. Because you're not returning like, uh, I guess Prosper prosperous innkeeper is a card. But you're usually if you're playing angels, you're playing white black, and I don't know any good two drops in those colors, outside of the ones that are already good, and that are not angels. Uh, historic, this is unplayable. Uh, you, you're in in five in white creature decks. You have better cards than this, especially at five. Commander, this is probably a staple. All the mythics are probably commander staples at this point. Uh, Lear, disciple of the drowned. Two blue, three colorless, legendary human wizard. Three, four spells cannot be countered. Each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard has flashback. The flashback cost is equal to the card's mana cost. Should say value. Whatever. Um, so the reason the reason this clause exists is because it would be pretty busted if this would only affected your opponents or your spells. Meaning that you can recast or draw new all of your counter spells. So this safety valve is why that's there. Uh, so basically, all spells cannot be countered, and you're not playing counter spells for flashback costs out of your graveyard. And three, four for four, or three, four for five, will determine what removal is in the format and what's prevalent. Uh, but I'm more interested in this in historic than I am in standard because there's not very many. Uh, there's not very many. Um, that's a card. I can get behind that. Especially since there's good blue-white cards. Uh, like, uh, uh, a card we'll get to. But, uh, however you say that card, Triscophile. I know I missed a lot of letters in the middle. But, this card in Historic is going to matter when they start printing rituals in the format. Uh, but... I'm going to go make a draw deck. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then in standard, I, I got nothing. Like, this is a cool design, but I don't know what... I don't know what... I don't know what you're doing with it. Because there's no rituals, and playing stuff out of your graveyard, when you're playing... If you're playing blue, you're playing counter spells. So I guess this could be a control mirror card as a sideboard option, and then you're playing all your draw spells. I can see that. Notably, this does not have can't be countered, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, it's very expensive for what it does. Uh, Lord of the Forsaken costs too much. Uh, this is more of a standard or a commander staple than anything else, and the six for the six cost is too much. This is more of a commander card. Uh, Moonvale Regent, three colorless, one red creature, dragon. Flying, four four. Um, whenever a whenever you cast a spell, you may discard a card, if or discard your hand. If you do discard or draw a card for each of that of that spell's colors, uh, when Moonvale Regent dies, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of colors among permanents you control. So this is already good on rates, four four for four. Um, a lot of people are trying to do this with multicolor, and I'm here to tell you that's not what you're doing. That's not what you're doing with this card. What you're doing with this card is playing mono red, and every one of your one mana spells becomes every like play with fire becomes scry one draw one, shocks become scry one draw one, or shock becomes draw a card, deal two damage draw a card, and then that's your way to deal the extra. This is like having experimental frenzy. That's a creature. And it does something when it dies that you, uh, 
that you deal a damage. If for some reason you're playing this in like blue red where you're playing like is it dragons? I can see that where you're pitching, you know, an is it card that you don't want and you're drawing two. I can see that for being a deal. Um I think that's too cute, but Tiamat is a shout. But you're usually using this in mono red in my opinion. The the smaller the pool, the better. But Tiamat's kind of funny. Cuz I forgot that was a, that was still in or that was a card. But this card's very good. Consuming Blob. Two green, three colorless creature ooze. Star, star, plus one. Consuming Blob's power is equal to the number of card types among cards in your graveyard. And its toughness is equal to that number plus one. At the beginning of your end step, create a green ooze creature token. I try to say green and ooze together. With this power, this creature's power is equal to the number of card types among cards in your graveyard, in, in your graveyards, and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. So this is basically fixed Tarmogoyf that costs a million. Um, th notably, this gives you a two for one, and even if you have, you know, land creature sorcery in your graveyard, that's six power for five. That's good enough. Um, and if you have more than that, then that's even better. I'd use all the creature lands. For what? Um, but yeah, this is a good 5 drop. I don't know how good it is, though. It doesn't have trample. A lot of the 5s, 6s, 4 5s, and 6s in green usually have trample, but you're usually getting a 2 for 1 because you're getting 2 bodies that have good types. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, I know what you're saying. But I think this is good enough. This would be good in the... Uh, if you're playing that uh, another Mythic that we're going to talk about here in a second. I think this is fine. But it's still it's still fine. It's still good. Um, Enduring Angel. Two colorless, three white. Flying, double strike. You have hexproof. Three, three. If your life total would be to reduce to zero or less, instead, transform Enduring Angel and your life total becomes three. Then, if a Enduring Angel didn't transform this way, you lose the game. Essentially, you can't copy this. And creating a token wouldn't do it anyway because there's nothing to transform to, but you can't, like, do anything crazy to get it to flip or have multiples or whatever. Um, yeah, you can exalt the deeds this and it can't die, which is notable. That's a good catch. Uh, it flips into Angelic Enforcer. Flying, you have Hexproof. Angelic Enforcer's power and toughness are equal to are each equal to your life total. Whenever Enforcer in attacks, double your life total. Notably, not combat damage. It just happens when you attack. So, it'd be at 3, then doubles. If you're able to give this lifelink, or um, if you're able to give a double strike or or not double strike but lifelink or increase its power or whatever or gain more life uh this might matter uh again this is better than the other angel but still being a three three for five is just so feel bad because there's a lot of things that deal three damage so getting there is like like, obviously, if you have this out, you're taking damage, you're never blocking, ever. But this is very, very fragile, especially at 5. So you better be ready to try to protect this. I imagine that you're playing, like, you know, blue-white, even if it's angels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better to do nothing with this than do nothing with, say, Sigarda's Savior or whatever. Um, Historic, I have no idea, but if you're playing an angel deck like the gain life deck, there's no way you're ever at zero, so I don't know if you're playing this, but it is an angel. Uh, I don't know what you would do with this in Historic, to be honest. But in Standard, I can see the scene play, just because of what it does. And if you're able to protect it, even better. Do, 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 do. Um, Pop It Stitcher. All right, I preface this by saying I'm going to be a little biased on this card because I think this is one of my favorite cards in the set. Of course. I imagine that Mono White, that with uh, Exalted, Book, or whatever. With, now you have two two things to get with the book. Uh, Poppet Stitcher. Excuse me. 
This is one of my favorite cards in the set. Uh, two colorless, one blue. Creature, human, wizard, 2-3. Two, when you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2-2 two, two black creature token with decayed. There's reminder text it can't block. When it attacks, sacrifice it into combat. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more creature tokens, you may transform Poppet Stitcher. And then Poppet Stitcher becomes Poppet Factory. The art on this is just amazing. Creature tokens you control lose all abilities and have base power and toughness of three. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may transform Poppet Factory. Essentially, you can transform this whenever you want, especially if it's an artifact. Just, oh, I don't, I don't have to worry about it. Um... It notably does not have day and night bound, meaning that it is not on the day-night cycle. You can do it whenever you want. And this pairs well with uh, what I'm trying to do with it is pair it with Sedgemore Witch. And when you're casting, you get double the tokens. And if you're copying, you get triple the tokens. And another card that I really want to pair this with, which I think is really good, is Elrond's Epiphany. Because when you cast Elrond's Epiphany, whether it was... Uh, for seven or for off of foretell for six, you when you take your next turn, you flip this because you have three creature tokens the moment you cast it, and you're taking your extra turn, and then you have nine power on the board attacking the next turn you take, right? Uh, and even more if you have you know Sedgemore Witch and other stuff on the battlefield, uh. But the creature's already good on rate for three for a blue creature, and then it turns into an artifact, so it's not a creature when it flips. So they, if they had, like, if they drew a removal spell and now it's an artifact, they can't, like, you know, Infernal Grasp or do anything crazy like that. They have to have, like, an artifact removal spell or whatever. So uh, I don't think this is fast enough in Historic, but in Standard, this is going to see play, given that your, your Decayed... Decayed creature tokens are now 3-3s three and they don't have Decay anymore. And this works with all creature tokens. So, yeah. This set... This set the, the crazy thing about this set, the reason why I think it's so awesome, is because not only are the cards, most of them, not like... They're not balanced, like overbalanced. They have a... They have safety valves that are not like... They're not over the top, Right? Eldraine is what happens when you don't have any safety valves, and we're going to see what power level this set has with safety valves like Sigarda Savior, where you have to cast it. You can't just flicker it back and forth and get value off of it, and um, there's, a, there's a bunch of others that are like that. So we get to see what power level this set brings with uh, you know, cards like Stitcher. There, a lot of the mythics in this set are playable. Not like the last previous sets where a lot of the mythics are terrible and they're more like commander cards and they are playable and standard. So this is going to be a mythic heavy set that are that have a lot more mythic playables than before. So if you don't have mythic wild cards on arena, you better get them because Stitcher's playable. The adversaries are all playable. Um, most of the planeswalkers, if not all of them, are playable. So yeah, if you if you like, I have like 20, 30 mythic wild cards. I will have zero by the time this set releases. But this is one of my favorite cards in the set. I'm going to try to play this in every blue-black deck that I play. What is this card? I remember seeing this, but I never read it. Whenever Jaren Corrupted Bishop enters the battlefield... Or wait. Jaren Corrupted Bishop, two colorless, one green, legendary creature, human cleric, two, three. Yeah. They will be when I get to the rares. Whenever corrupted Jaren corrupted bishop enters the battlefield or another non-token human you control dies, you lose a life and create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. Two colorless target human you control gains lifelink until end of turn. At the beginning of your end step, if you have exactly 13 life and you pay 6, you transform Jaren and Jaren turns into Ormondel the Corrupter. Flying Trample, Lifelink, Sacrifice Another Creature, Draw a Card, 6-6. Six, six. Yo, if this cost wasn't here, this card's insane. Right? Like, this cost is steep. Like, you have to be at 13 exactly, and you have to pay this. And the creature you're getting is not even that good. I don't know about this card. 
Like, the front half is good. Because you... So your token, your non-token, your non-token humans have to die. But you get 1-1 humans. I don't know. This one seems good in black-white humans in historic, but I don't know how good it's going to be in standard. This card, this, this, the, the fact that you have to be at an exactly same, you have to be at exactly a life total and have six mana is just ridiculous. And this doesn't even win you the game. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like a 10-10 and it doesn't, like, deal a crap ton of damage. And six mana is a lot in a in a creature deck. Not to mention you have to be exactly at 13. Like, yeah, and it has to survive. But the creature half, the Jaren part is actually good. But this upside is, like, one of those, if you flipped it, like, you were already winning. Right? I don't know. I just like the front half. I don't know how good this is going to be in his in uh, in standard, but I would be interested to try this in historic. Um, because you can sacrifice humans with say something like uh, like Yogmoth, and you have like you know continuous stuff to to sacrifice and stuff like that. Um, I I just think that being exactly thirteen and you have to be on your end step and you have to have this and you have to have the <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Yeah, and it's legendary too, which is ridiculous. Sunstreak Phoenix. Two red, two colorless. Creature Phoenix. We're still in the Mythics, by the way. Like, I think all of these are playable, besides the ones that I've skipped. Uh, Sunstreak Phoenix, two red, two colorless. Phoenix, flying, 4-2. Uh, if it's neither night nor day, it becomes day as Sunstreak Phoenix enters the battlefield. When day becomes night or night becomes day, you may pay two, one red, one colorless. Uh, if you do return Sunstreak Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped, notably it does not have haste. Um, and it doesn't have the, the usual Phoenix thing of camp block. But coming into play tap is kind of annoying, but I understand that if your opponent makes it become day or night, that that would just be ridiculous that it happens, then you get a 4-2 that blocks. Uh... So, but, this card's really good. Uh, I wanted to pair this with, like, Magmatic Chandler and flipping it off of Consider and, um, you know, other cards that force you to discard or put stuff in the graveyard. And then you just wait for your opponent to, uh, to make it day or night. And it can happen on either your turn or theirs. And if you do it on yours where you don't cast anything... Now, notably, from what I understand, in order for that ability to happen, you either have to have a creature that forced it like this or a creature that has day or night bound. The moment that it happens, that's when it starts. Like, it doesn't start, like, on turn one where you don't play any spells, as far as I know. But I'd have to read the actual, uh, the actual mechanic and how it works. But I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But... I don't think this is playable in Historic because Arc Lake Phoenix is already the best Phoenix you can play unless there's a way. And then there's that other that other Phoenix that every time you cast a spell you get token or you get counters. And then you uh, by the time you get five counters it comes into play. Now it doesn't block, but you know you don't have to pay any mana. But this will see playing. I'm, I'm guaranteeing that this will see playing standard. Uh, it's good on rate. And uh, you just get it for free if it's in the graveyard. Uh, and it pairs well with the blue cards, the red cards that make you discard, stuff like that. So, yeah. I'm going to be playing this card. I like it. It also blocks Goldspan Dragon profitably, which is a net win for this card. Yeah, this card's good. Renin 7. One of the first cards to be spoiled, and I understand why. One of the faces of the set. Force four loyalty abilities. Ren and seven. Yeah. I'm tired of Goldspan Dragon. Uh three colors, two green. Legendary Planeswalker Ren. Plus one. Us uh, five starting loyalty. Plus one. Reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all land cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest in the graveyard. So this is a graveyard enabler. Uh zero. Put any number of land cards from your hand out of the battlefield tapped. So this ramps you. 
negative three or minus three, create a green tree full creature token with reach. And this creature and this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. So if you have five lands in play and you minus this, you now have a, uh, you get a creature token and it has reach. Minus eight, return all permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. You get an emblem with you have no maximum hand size. This M, this 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 ultimate is what I what I noticed with this set, um, and actually the last couple of sets is planeswalkers with ultimates that have like a giant minus are not I win to are not I wins. Like this is not an I win. Uh, Teferi, the new Teferi is not an I win. Um, a lot of the a lot of the walkers from the previous set were not like I wins. So like we're getting away from these automatic oh if i get to this this thing then i get like you know a chandra torture defiance emblem where every time i cast a spell deal five damage like we're we're not we're not doing that so we're getting this type of stuff uh this card is in this card's insane so this card does everything you want it draws you cards it protects yourself it accelerates you and gives you insane value at the end and this also gives you decisions to make. This also goes to six the moment it hits play, because you're usually, you know, drawing a bunch of cards, which are usually lands. And when you minus, if you if you have to protect yourself, like on the draw, you play this, minus it, and now you have a creature that's a 5-5 that blocks gold span dragon prof profitably. So you don't have to worry about getting blown out. Now, you might lose it if they have two, but the point being is that you get to block it all day long unless they have a removal spell for it. And being able to rebuy your lands, and there's a creature that allows you to play lands from the graveyard, so you don't care if they put it in the yard. And there's a lot of things that you can do with this, and most green decks that are mid-range, not aggro, are going to be playing this. And this card also demands that you play a little bit more lands in your deck. Like, there's a ramp deck that I create that I made that has 28 lands in it. So, um, this seems very good. Like, probably on power level with Arlen. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, because this does everything you want. Uh, for that mid-range ramp deck. This is not on the power level of Nyssa, but this is pretty damn close. Every green deck that's a mid-range deck that's playing a lot of lands is going to play four of these. It's, it's non-negotiable. This card's really good. Um, we are out of the Mythics. So essentially, these are good. This one's not that great. This is a cyborg card. This card's trash. This card's okay. Awesome. Fine. Good. Front half fine. Good. Insane. And we didn't get to the other one. This is for the monocolor cards. All right. <laughs> Trisk is my go-to. Uh, this is all the way down there. All right. Fateful Absence. One colors, one white, instant, destroy target creature or planeswalker, its controller cre uh, investigates, which you get a clue token and it draws a card. This card's insane. Uh, Declaration of Stone was playable and it was a sorcery, making it an instant and tagging basically two permanents that matter and you get a, and you get a clue token. Uh, and it's... Yeah, it's conditional, but really it's unconditional. I would much rather you draw a card, a random card, than having Ren and Seven. And th this card's good. Uh, all white aggro decks are probably playing four of these because it hits everything. And if you're not playing four of these, you're playing four of them and you're 75. Yeah, and it's cheap. This card's really good. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> it does everything. So, yeah. Probably one of the best rares in the set, to be honest. Because it kills everything. Uh, Malevolent Hermit. Uh, in Historic, I'm not sure how good this is. Because you have a lot better options. But this is still very good. Uh, like, as a one of in a control shell. Or a couple in the aggro shells that are playing Deccan Stone. Like, you can split Deccan Stone in this. Because it's, the fact that this is an instant... Like, if you don't know the difference, play Deccan Stone and play this 
alongside it and tell me which one's better. And I get, and I'm ninety uh, percent of the time this is going to be better than Deck and Stone will be. So yeah, this is this is also a stroke playable. But you're not playing four probably. You're probably playing like two. Uh, Malevolent Hermit one colorless one blue. Uh, Human Wizard two one uh, has Disturb, which is a new mechanic. One blue sacrifice. Uh, Malevolent Hermit counter target non creature spell unless its controller plays pays three. Uh, Disturb is you may cast this card from your graveyard, transform for its disturb cost. So if it's in the graveyard, you pay three, and then you get the backside. Uh, the backside is a uh, Benevolent Geist, Spirit Wizard, Spirit, uh, two two flying non creature spells you control can't be countered. If Benevolent Geist would be put into the graveyard anywhere, exile it. Um, sure, it's a spirit. Uh, and I think this card's better than, than I think it is, but maybe it isn't. I'm not sure. Like the sacrifice clause is fine, but still you don't have to tap it, which is relevant. Uh, this, if this had tap, you couldn't do it like on turn three and leave up a mana, but on turn three, now you can. So like if they have a four mana, four mana planeswalker or whatever, you just, you just tag it with this. And it just keeps pressuring. To, this might be actually good. And it's a wizard. So if like you're playing like a blue blue white party deck, this is actually fine. Because you have like turn one cleric, turn two this, turn three whatever. And you have like if it's a two drop or whatever, then you have the one mana to like tag a removal spell if they have it. And then if this dies, you still get the wizard. And it, yeah, this card's got to be good. Like not like insane, but this has got to be good. Right? I don't know how good this is in historic, but if you just flip this over and you have some way to reduce the cost, I'm going to go on the limb and say this is good. Like, not like insane. It's probably fine. Because <laughs> you still get it out of the this <laughs> You still get out of the graveyard, though. I don't know. This is probably fine. Um, Meat Hook Massacre. Uh, Double black, two black X, legendary enchantment. When Meat Hook Massacre enters the battlefield, each creature gets negative X, negative X until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. Whenever a creature an opponent dies, or whenever a creature an opponent control dies, you gain one life. Um, uh, this The name of this card is insane, and the art is great. But... I heard a couple of people saying that this is the card that that was needed for in historic for the Vesper Lark deck to be good because now you don't have to play terrible cards like Blood Artist, which is relevant. But this also is double black, which is annoying. And uh, conditional sweepers are whatever, but I don't know. I don't know how good this is. Maybe the life game matters when you're sweeping the board. I don't know. No. Y yeah. I, I didn't even realize it was mythic. I thought it was rare. Um, this doesn't have a mythic feel to it. I guess this is better than that uh, Than that one four mana enchantment that comes into play. It gives you a 1-1 one, one, and then every time a creature dies, uh, you lo opponent loses one, you gain one. This has got to be better than that. Yeah, this is probably fine. Um... I'm probably not doing this card justice, but I would imagine that this is more playable in Historic than Standard, but because there's a lot of X1s and X2s in Standard that have, like, Evasion or Indestructible or, you know, where this matters. Stays as long as it's in play. No, the X is until end of turn. God, that would be insane. If all creatures got that, if you paid three and it was always like that, that'd be insane. But yeah, this is fine. Probably more playable in Historic than Standard, but whatever. Maybe not because there's a lot of removal that is at two and there's a lot of creatures that are at like two. Two toughness. So it's probably playable in both. Another favorite of mine in the top five. Yeah, Zombies. That makes a lot of sense too. Smoldering Egg. One colorless, one red. Creature, dragon, egg. This is a dragon? I didn't even read that. I thought it was just egg. This is a dragon, chat. All right. One, this, this is even better. 
One colorless, one red. Creature Dragon Egg, 0-4, Defender. When you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put any put a number of Ember counters on Smoldering Egg equal to the amount of mana spent to cast the spell. Then, if Smoldering Egg has seven or more Ember counters on it, remove them and transform Smoldering Egg into Ashmouth Dragon. Flying, 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Ashmoth Dragon deals 2 damage to any target. This card is insane. Alright? I don't care if anybody says this card's good. Um, You curve into this with a 3 mana like Prismari Command. And then on 4, you cast uh, Memory Del... Yeah, any burn deck... Um. Uh, what's that card? The 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 dragon the dragon spell where you reveal a dragon or you discard a dragon or you reveal a dragon and it deals damage to all nine dragon creatures, sweeps the board, and then you get this. Yeah, this card's insane. All right, uh, I built a big mana deck and I forgot about the dragon card. Yeah, uh, this card's so good. So, if anybody ever thought about Thing in the Ice, it's essentially, you know, that, but the creature is not as good, but you st every time you cast a Shock, it's 4 damage to whatever target. So now, not only do you have Goldspan Dragon, you have this, and then you have the Blue Dragon, but I want to do Mono Red because you can do, you can do this card because it's a Dragon, and then you do Goldspan Dragon, and there's got to be another Dragon card that's in Red... And then you have 12 Dragon Spells that has a Sweeper and has Dragon's Flame, which does 3 damage, and you have to reveal Dragon. So, um, not that one. I thought there was a 3 or a 4 cost, but I might be wrong. You might have to play blue. I mean, you get all the good cards, right? You get you get all the cards and your mana's not terrible. So, yeah. This card's insane. I think it's one of the better cards in the set. But and it's one of my favorite cards. This card, Poppet Stitcher, and there's a couple others that I think are just really cool. But this card, the, the, I, I can't say much about it. Oh no 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 the 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 uh, the one where you cast a spell and you discard your hand and draw a card. The one that we talked about, the Moonvale Regent. So there's your twelve dragons, right? This Regent Goldspan Dragon, and then just a bunch of three and four mana or play with fire, frostbite, uh, the four mana sweeper. Dragon's Flame, uh, and whatever spell you want. Uh, a Tundra Fumeral, which allows you to play another three mana spell. Or not Tundra Fumeral, but Magic Missile. And you can splash white for other spells. So this this card I like a lot. A lot of my card a lot of my decks are gonna have this in it. Yeah, you can play that card and splash white, and then you get the small helix card, and then you get yeah. The, the, this card's good, chat. All right. Um, in, stand, in Historic, it's probably not good enough um, because the removal is much better. However, this has 0, 4, not 0, 3. So Lightning Helix does not tag this. You got to have some good removal, chat. You got to have Blood Chief's Thirst. You got to have Fatal Push or, you know... Anything that deals four damage for two. Uh, my kingdom from Flame Slash chat. Uh, maybe this card's playable in Historic, but probably not because it's too slow. It's not like it's not like Thing in the Ice, where it flips. God, imagine if both these were in that format. Chat, are you kidding me? Eight Egg, Pioneer, Jeskai Colors. Yeah, Thundering Rebuke. I think that card's going to be playable uh, in uh, in Standard now because there's a lot of bad removal spells now. Um, Tolivar Huntmaster. Tolivar's Huntmaster. Four colorless, two green. Whenever or when Huntmaster enters the battlefield, create two green... Two, two, two green we wolf creature token. Say that five times fast. Daybound, 6-6. Uh, six, six. Backside, Nightbound, whenever it turns into Tolivar's Pack Leader, Creature Werewolf. This is a human, by the way. 
Uh, whenever Tolvar's pack leader enters the battlefield or attacks, create two 2-2 two, two green wolf creature tokens. 7-7. Seven, seven. Two green, two colorless, and another wolf or werewolf you control fights target creature you don't control. This is basically... Um, this is basically Grave Titan, chat. This is Grave Titan. This card's good. Yeah, it's a human until it transforms, but it's still a werewolf. But still. Either side, you get green... You, you get the tokens. Now... In order for you to get more tokens, it has to be flipped. But by the time you cast this, you should already be able to two spell, right? And then you're able to turn this into basically Grave Titan. But you still get the two green wolf creature tokens on the way in. So it's essentially that. This card's got to be good. Um, and then the flip side is just insane. You get to basically fight whenever. And every time it attacks, you get wolf creature tokens. Yeah, this card's good. Probably not playable in Historic, but this is definitely playable in Standard. This is your Curve Topper in a mid-range deck. Like in your Red and 7 deck. Um, Sigarda Splendor. This is basically... Um, reverse... Uh, reverse Phyrexian Arena. I don't know if this card's good or not. I'll read it, whatever. Sigarda Splendor. Two white, two colorless enchantment. As Sigarda Splendor enters the battlefield, note your life total. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card if your life total is greater than or equal to the last noted life total from or for Sigarda Splendor, then note your life total again. So essentially, every time you, um, every time on your upkeep, if you draw a card because it's greater than or equal to the life, then you have to note your life total again. So essentially, if this is always at so, like, if you cast this, or on your upkeep when it's noted, so, like, if you always stay at 10, you're always drawing a card, right? Yeah, you're always drawing a card if you're if you're at 10 or more. So, maybe this card's actually good. And then every time you cast a white spell, you, you gain a life. Notably, it doesn't matter if it's white or, or multicolored as long as it's white. This card seems good. Better than what I thought about it when I read it. I thought it had to be greater than, not just equal. Being equal, you just keep drawing cards. Yeah. This is probably, this is probably not playable in Historic, because it's too slow. Cosmic Elixir, but it also costs four, so you're competing in that, in that aspect. Unless you're playing both. But then that's a lot of fours that you're playing, because you're playing both of these. But you're gaining a lot of life. I imagine you're playing blue white though. So like you're playing like Faithful Mending and this and Cosmic Elixir and you're just gaining like an insane amount of life. But you have to do something with that life total though. Like you can't just be at like 50 and not do anything. But yeah, this is probably fine. Excuse me. All right, chat. This is my favorite card. My kingdom for a four... A four cost draw spell that isn't terrible. Memory Deluge. Two colorless, two blue, instant. Look at the top X cards of your library when X where X is the amount of mana spent to cast a spell. Put two of them in your hand, the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Flashback is back. You may cast this card from your graveyard for those who don't know what flashback is. So if it's in your graveyard and this has a flashback cost of seven, you cast it and then you exile it. Uh, if you cast it for the flashback cost, that's what it costs to cast this spell. So essentially on the way in, when you cast it from your hand, I've been at 3,000. I mean, technically, uh, I've been at infinite life myself. So I know what that's like. So when you get to infinite life, like the game doesn't end. But I have been at a life total over 100 and have lost a game. So, and I've beaten people that have been at 100 life total and lost the game. So, uh, so this is Drawn from Dreams on the Way In, which if you don't know, that's from a card from M19. That was a sorcery that did this, but you looked at the top seven cards, but you picked two, but didn't have flashback. But this turns into Dig Through Time uh, on the way out. So on the way in, 
This is basically look at four, draw two. This is way better than all of those cards that have ever been that said scry two, draw two. This is look at four and pick the four, the two of the best ones and put them in your hand and draw. You don't draw them. You put them in your hand. So like if you have this and somebody has Narset, it doesn't matter. You put those two in your hand. You don't draw them. When you pay five, when you pay seven, you look at the top seven cards and put two. So it's virtually dig through, dig through time. Um, dig through time is an old spell that's been banned in modern and pioneer, blah, blah, blah. Um, not banned in standard. But this is one of the best draw spells at four mana that has ever been printed. Uh, probably not better than, probably not better than Factor Fiction. But this is pretty damn close because you get, you get two of these, all right, and that's insane. If you're ever able to do this twice, notably if you reduce this cost. So like if you have something that says instants and sorceries cost one less, if you pay three, you only see the top three cards. All right. Same with this. If you reduce this by one or two or whatever, you only look at those X cards. All right. But if you cast this twice, once for the flashback cost, you should be winning. Uh, but yeah, this is one of my favorite top five in the set. Most of my favorite cards are blue or red. And this one is insane. All right. All my blue black decks are playing four of these. Uh, my is it decks are playing two. Probably should be at four because this is the best draw spell since <laughs> Factor Fiction. That's at four. In standard, probably since Glimmer of Genius. Uh, all the rest of them, like Chemistry's Insight and all the other four, they're so bad. Inspiration type spells. This one's the best one so far since those since Glimmer and Factor Fiction. Uh, this will be playable in Historic too. Like, uh, yeah, still playable. Probably not a four of, but you're playing some amount of these. Anytime that you're playing a four mana draw two or whatever, you're playing this in in in, in spite of it. So, yeah, I can't wait to play with this card. Uh, Gisa Glory Glorious Resurrector, two black, two colorless, legendary human wizard, four four. Uh, if a creature in opponent control would die, exile it, exile it instead. At the beginning of your upkeep, put all cards, creature cards, exile with Gisa, Glorious, Resurrector onto the battlefield you control. They gain Decayed. So they basically can't block and you have to sacrifice them at the end of combat. Um, This is not playable in Historic. And if it is, it's a one of. This is not, notably not, uh, Dothy Voidwalker or uh, Kalidus. And we already have a, a a spell or two creatures that basically do this already that are not legendary. Or, excuse me, yes, one of them is legendary and one of them isn't. Uh, there's one that's a snow creature and another one that is uh, Turgrid. And if those aren't playable, I don't know what makes this playable. So, I'm not sure about this. But 4-4 for 4, four, four, four is rate. Especially for a black creature. So, maybe, maybe Turgrid costing one less matters. Notably a human. Notably a wizard. So, I don't know about this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I'm going to say this card's not bad. But I'm skeptical of how good this is. And I'm pretty sure this is not playable in Historic. I play a lot of Historic. Burning down the house. Or burn down the house. Two red, three colorless sorcery. Choose one. Burn down the house deals five damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Or create three 1-1 one, one red devil creature tokens with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. They gain haste until end of turn. So, um, red sweepers that deal five are already good. But the problem with sweepers in the previous standards where they were playable, like Hour of Devastation and other sweepers that are just like this, they didn't have any modality to them. So this having modal modality to it um, means that if you're playing against a control deck that you don't care about this, these creature tokens matter. So you're not shy about playing four of these in a deck that you're trying to maximize the both sides of this. So essentially you're making a deck building restriction or concession when you're building this. That means that you're not... Um, 
control decks that are playing like this card that are playing like a blue red mid range deck that doesn't care about the creatures or cares about the damage. Uh, you're playing this and you can still create, you know, blockers that also deal damage or, you know, in the control mirror where you're creating devil tokens and they get in there and they have haste and it's kind of like playing um, heroic reinforcements, except you're dealing one less damage uh, unless they all die. Like you attack with them, they deal damage and then they die. Uh, and then obviously five damage to all creatures uh, is relevant because most of the creatures that you're killing are usually on toughness of three or four, maybe five. Uh, in standard, this is very playable, and I would not be surprised if I see Red Decks playing a couple of these. In Historic, you already have Hour of Devastation, and losing Indestructibility is is, is relevant, and that, do, and that sees virtually no play. So I can't imagine that this is much better. Notably, you can play this in the Tokens deck, uh, but 5 mana is a lot, and you already have good spells at four that turn into seven so mostly playable in standard but not much else uh the sneak into festival or uh crash the festival or whatever the actual card name is triple green three sorcery so six cmc or mana value, cost, whatever. Sorcery, look at the top five cards of your library. Put up to two permanent cards with mana value five or less among them. Onto the battle battlefield, put the rest of them on the bottom of your library in a random order. Flashback, ten. Um, so, Arena Decklist Podcast specifically is like over the moon on this card. And I just don't see it. So, you can get Renin 7 and Asika's Chariot. But in order to maximize the value on this card, you got to play a lot of fours and a lot of fives. So your your um, your deck has to be slanted in a way where you're trying to maximize just putting two fives or a five and a four or a four and a four or a four and a three or whatever. And if you miss, like you hit a five and just a land, man, does that feel bad? God, does that feel bad? So I think what you're trying to do with this card is it's a value engine where it's you're playing it as a Coco or collect a company, but you're playing it as if you're playing all the good green spells, right? So you're playing like, um, like old girl troll, uh, run and seven, a Seekish chariot, like all these big dumb green creatures that are huge and they're good. And they're always like two for one in the opponent or whatever. And then at the top of the curve, when you have like no resources, you just jam this and you're just like, now beat me. Right, so you're like playing like Ren and Seven. You're playing the the ooze that gives you two creature to or gives you the creature and the token. Old girl troll, a Seekers chariot that gives you a bunch of a bunch of value. So I think that's what you're doing is you're just playing this mid mid range game plan where you're just like wolf pack or werewolf pack leader, old girl troll, um, a Seekers chariot, Ren and Seven, the ooze, and then this is your curve topper. Like two of these and two of the. Um, the six six uh, wanna be the uh, uh, the Grave Titan Tolivar's pack leader or whatever. The flashback cost is kind of a uh, irrelevant. Like if you cast this a second time, like yeah, you get it, but it costs ten, bro. Like, are you kidding me? So standard, yeah. The green decks will probably play this, especially the not the not the non. Linear aggro plans, so the mid range plans that are just trying to go on curve two, three, four, whatever. Not the green aggro decks that are playing like a bunch of one and two drops. So, like green, red, mono green, the ones that are playing like you know, Blizzard Brawl and stuff like that. Yeah, so and then you're playing like a bunch of fives and a bunch of fours and a couple of threes. Yeah, but I uh, this is not playable in historic, but standard, yeah. This is very, very good. Um, I don't think this is very good. This card sucks. Um, Bloodline Calling. Two black, one colorless, instant, choose one. Target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. Or creature tokens get minus two, minus two. Modal spells are awesome, especially ones that are virtually murder effects. But this one is giving minus five. And that basically kills everything. Uh, this kills Goldspan Dragon. This kills Decayed Zombie Tokens. Yeah, this spell's good. 
Um, yeah, very good. Uh, probably not playable in Historic. It's probably niche, like a cyborg card, like if tokens were a deck. Uh, you don't really care about the minus five too much because this costs a lot. But maybe as a one of, but in standard, yeah, this is fine. Kills Goldspan Dragon, kills Ren and Seven Tokens on the on curve. Yeah, this, this card's good. Uh, Daybound, what does this card do? I don't think that's good enough. Willow Geist, I don't think is good enough. Um... What is this one? Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Adeline Splendid Cathar. Two white, one colorless, legendary human knight. Vigilance. Uh, this creature's power is equal to the number of creatures you control. Toughness, four. Whenever you attack for each opponent, create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token tapped and attacking that player or planeswalker they control. This card is good. Um, notably, you don't have, this does not have to attack. So you don't have to attack with this card. Uh, this plays very good offense and very good defense. And having that fourth toughness on three is very good. Uh, you're playing this in a mono white or a made majority white with a splash of like red or green. I mean, any color, but. Uh, mostly slanted to the mid range mid range plan that's going a little bigger than your aggro decks, but the fact that this attacks and it'll always be at least two, um, and the turn you play it if you attack you get the t like this card's so good. <laughs> yeah, I think this is playable in both formats to be honest. Yeah, this passes the lightning helix test. Uh, this passes the standard test, fourth toughness, at three. This card's good. And you don't have to attack with this card specifically to get the token. You can attack with whatever. And this attacks and blocks it. Yeah, this card's good. And it's a human, so maybe it's playable in older formats, but I don't I don't see it. Maybe in Pioneer, because Pioneer is a generally lower power format than other formats that are that are like modern. But yeah, in standard this card's good. Um, yeah. If I'm, if I'm a white aggro deck or a white mid range deck, I'm playing this notably, this is three. So this is in contention with other three white drops, uh, like, uh, Skyclave apparition. So your probably mid range plan is a little bit different with this. You're probably in a more aggressive shell. So maybe this is the curve top or not the curve topper, but pretty, pretty close in the white aggressive decks, like the mono white decks. But you're already playing like a lot of land, so you're probably splitting with this. But this, this card's so good. Um, I don't think this card's good. All right, I got poked fun up for this card. Slaughter Specialist. Um, one colorless, one black. Vampire Warrior. When Slaughter Specialist enters the battlefield, each opponent creates a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. Whenever a creature and opponent control dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on Slaughter Specialist. 3-3. Three, three. So, hear me out, chat. Uh, this card does not die to any of the one or two mana spells that are going to be played. This doesn't die to the Hel Helix card. This does not die to Play With Fire. Uh, this does not die to Frostbite unless they have the three the three snow permanents. Uh and they only get a 1-1 green creature token. And this card is a vampire warrior. So, party. And it's a vampire. And it comes in. Yeah, they get a token. But if that token dies, it, it's a 4-4. Four -four. So, you're attacking all the time. And this is the 3-3. Three -three. So, this is above rate for a black creature. Token, and they're only getting a creature. Like, I think this card's good. Just because... You want to be on the beatdown plan with red black or mono black or black white or party or whatever. And if your curve is turn one, archpriest, turn two, this, turn three, something else, that's a lot of damage. Like you're you're getting in there. So or unless you're playing just black black red vampires where you're just crushing them, like getting like trample and death touch and all this other stuff. Yeah. Uh this card's good. 
I don't think this is good enough in historic, but in standard, this is playable, and I don't think giving them the token matters, but having that third toughness matters. And if this gets to a four, good lord, is this card good. Uh, Falcon Wrath, Pit Fighter, one red vampire warrior, again, party, and a vampire. One red, one colorless, discard a card, sacrifice a vampire, draw two cards, activate only if your opponent lost life this turn, 2-1. Red decks will play this, vampire decks will play this just because it's a one drop, it doesn't matter if it's good or not. Um, notably, you can do this uh, if you attack and you deal damage and then they, and the opponent tries to kill one of your vampires. Notably, you can sacrifice this. It doesn't say another vampire, it just says a vampire, so you can sacrifice this creature and draw two cards. Um, and if you have, like, random vampire tokens laying around, you can do that. Yeah, this card's fine. Uh, two one for one red. Yeah. Red decks are playing this just because any aggressive deck, uh, party's probably playing it if you're playing a party deck because it's a warrior. Probably not good enough in, in Historic, just because the one drops have to be good, and this is probably not cutting it. You gotta be aggressive. And this is probably not aggressive enough, but time will tell. But standard, yeah, that's a playable one drop because it's a 2-1. Briarbridge Tracker, one green, one colorless human scout. Uh, Vigilance, 2-3. When Briarbridge Tracker enters the battlefield, investigate. Uh, as long as you uh, control a token, uh, this gets plus 2, plus 0. So it doesn't have to be this token. Uh, this is draw card on delay. Or you don't get it initially, but you eventually get it back. Uh, any creature that's not as powerful and you add draw a card to it is playable. Uh, probably not playable in Historic, but this is definitely playable in Standard. Because you effectively have a 4-3. And if you continuously have tokens, zombie tokens laying around. Uh, another card that I'm going to talk about that's in black. If you have Investigate tokens, anything. Uh, green white has that card where you get two white creature tokens, uh, savor the party or something like that. So you're, you can pretty much have this as a four or three out for three. So yeah, this is playable, not tireless tracker, but a tracker. Um, vanish the horde. Yeah, whatever. Grafted identity is just a, you have to sacrifice a creature and get control magic for creatures. Uh, Mask of Grizzle Brand. I don't think equipment that you for, you have to pay to equip is good enough. Um, Curse of the Shaken Faith. One red, one colorless enchantment. Enchant player. When enchant player casts a spell other than their first spell they cast each turn or copies a spell, Curse of the Shaken Faith deals two damage to them. Now, this doesn't say after the first copy spell or copies a spell, all right? So if they ever copy a spell, they deal two damage. Uh, if they ever cast two spells a turn, deal two damage. Um, if they cast three spells, four damage. Because it says a spell other than their first spell. So every time they cast a spell and it wasn't their first spell, two damage. Every time they copy a spell, two damage. So this is a mono red, uh, this is a mono red cyborg card against like the uh, Clarion Spirit decks that are trying to multi spell, or the blue red decks that are copying spells or casting two spells a turn, like the Delver decks. Uh, yeah, this card's good. Um, this is probably playable in historic because the as the formats get older, spells get more efficient. And you're able to leverage this spell a lot. So I imagine Mono Red and Red Red Aggro decks are going to start playing this more than a lot of other spells. Like Clothis and stuff like that. Not saying Clothis will get cut completely, but this spell is really good. Uh, Augur of Autumn. 2 green, 1 colorless, human druid. 2, 3. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play lands off the top of your library. Coven is a new... Uh, mechanic and basically as long as you control three or more creature with different power uh, then you get an ability and the ability for this one is you may cast creature spells from the top of your library this seems like an afterthought 
as in like you're if you're playing a creature deck of any type you're probably going to get this on accident and you're already playing lands off the top of your library anyway and then you get this notably this is not course course or crew fix because this is three not four and you're not gaining life but this pairs very well with druid class and if you're playing creatures already you get to do both of these um i think this is probably better than average but it's probably fine i got a couple of decks that have the, that has this in it we're almost through a lot of the playables uh, Curse of the Silence is whatever. Geist. It's a lord. Allows your flashbacks to cost one less if you're casting from the graveyard flying, but... I don't know. I don't think Spirits is going to be a big deal in, in Standard. Uh, graveyard Trespass or whatever. Geist Flame Reservoir, whatever. Unnatural Growth, whatever. Brutal Cathar. One color... Two colors, one white. Human Soldier Werewolf. Whenever this creature enters the battlefield or transforms into Brutal Cathar, exile target creature and opponent controls until this creature leaves the battlefield. Daybound. 2-2. Two, two. And then it transforms into Moon Rage Brute. Werewolf. First Strike. 3-3. Three, three. Ward. Pay 3 life. Um. So, this is easier to cast than Skyclave Apparition. And this will be competing, but Skyclave Apparition and this together, like if you compare them, Skyclave Apparition is is slightly better because it hits any permanent. However, if you exile anything with Brutal Cathar, they get that exact card back. With Skyclave Apparition, you get a token that gives you... You know, it could be so like you can you can exile Brutal Cathar or exile a creature with Brutal Cathar like a three cost, you know, like a three cost two two, right? With Skyclave Apparition, if they kill it, their two two that was a three cost that may or may not have had abilities now comes back as a three three. When you have Brutal Cathar, it might come back as the same creature or whatever. So like there's like there's like decisions you have to make. But the cool thing about this is it's easier to cast and it was already good already to get one creature but if this ever flips back and gets and tags another creature um that's insane and you don't care if it turns into a 3/3 three, three. you would prefer it to be wolfpack or uh, moonrage brute so yeah this card's very good contention at skyclave apparition but easier to cast and you're not upset if you hit a five cost creature and if they kill it, like so be it. But with Skyclave apparition, you would never be able to hit the five drop, right? Notably, this is the not hit any permanent. It's just creatures. Uh, probably not playable in historic Skyclave apparition is too good. Uh, sludge monster, whatever curse of the leeches, whatever light up the night. People are talking about this card. Uh, no, this isn't the card I was thinking of. What does this do? Light Up the Night deals sorcery, deals damage to any target. It deals X plus one instead if it's target, if that target is a creature or planeswalker. Flashback, remove X loyalty counters from among planeswalker. If you cast a spell this way, X can't be zero. Um, this is medium. Yeah, this is in Banefire. It's worse. Now, granted, if you... If if you do this for two, it's only two damage. Yeah, this card's not good. All right. This card's whatever. A lot of the good death touch creatures are rotating. Cathar's Call, whatever. Uh, some of the chat was talking about this. Triscophile or Trisk Aid Echophile, however you say that. Um, I don't think this card's any good, but it is a two cost, one three wizard, and it is a human. You have no maximum hand size. And you tap four, draw a card. If you have exactly 13 cards in your hand, you win the game. I don't know ever you have 13 cards in your hand, but this does pair well with Wizard Class. And um, if you never play a card, like if you play Wizard Class first, you have seven cards if you're on the draw. And then you play this, you have seven cards. And then when you flip or you add, dress, so 10 cards. There's a lot of ways. to. You have to do a lot to get 13 cards in your hand. So, yeah. 
There, that's a lot of work. And you have to ask to be on your upkeep. It's still a fun card to play with, though. I will give it that. This card's unplayable and historic. Jadar, Gol, Ghoul Caller of Nephelia. One black, one colorless, legendary human wizard. 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of your end step, if you control no creatures with decayed, create a 2-2 two, two black creature token with decayed. It can't block whenever it attacks sacrifice. This card's good. All right. So it isn't a zombie, but it creates those zombies. And while it doesn't help another card that we're going to talk about here soon uh, get bigger, this continuously creates a token if you don't have one for a sacrifice fodder. So like uh, Eaten Alive, uh, Village Rights, you know, one mana cards that sacrifice stuff. And it's and it's a zombie, so you continuously get those back. Um, this card's very good. Probably not playable in Historic, but very playable in Standard. And all of my zombie decks are going to be playing three of these. And my uh, decks that are playing a lot of Sacrifice are going to be playing at least two of them. Because this card's very good. Um, no, no... All right, now we're to the uncommon. Champion of the Perished, chat. This is Bay. No, I'm kidding. Champion of the Perished. One or one black mana. Zombie, one, one. Whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Champion of the Perished. Zombie decks have been very close in, in standard before and have been very close in historic. Um, this now gives historic two good one drops in crypt break or crypt breaker and this, and in standard you get this. And then a lot of your twos like white or right, or is it wait? Uh, and, um, the blue black half Lord that gives plus one plus zero. So those two drops get this bigger and, while this doesn't make it a 2-2 two, two on as soon as you cast it, Jadar keeps giving this a way to continuously add it if you're sacrificing it. Um, so, yeah. This card's good. It's It makes zombies playable. And in Historic, you now have two good one-drops in this and Crit Breaker. And then all your twos are very, very good. And um, your... Uh, the adversary is good on the way in and as it scales. So, like, uh, if you ever get it to create multiple tokens, like, this gets huge. So, yeah, this card's very good. Both playable in standard historic. I would not be surprised if this saw play in other older formats also that has a zombie deck playable. Probably in Pioneer. Maybe a little bit too fragile for modern but pioneer probably has enough zombies because it has crit breaker in that format also um uncommons now cathartic pyre three damage uh to target creature planeswalker or discard to draw two or up to d discard up to two and draw that many cards this card's playable good removal spell it'll see play uh no no uh, rip on summon. This is not strictly better than on summon, but pretty close. Just return target creature to owner's hand. If it was mana value three or less, scry one. Delver decks will play this. Um, no, no. Uh, if this flips, you don't have to sacrifice it every time you attack. Uh, this, whoops. Every time you attack, you destroy it. So this actually might be playable as a sideboard option for enchantment and artifacts. Uh, what is this? No, it costs too much. Vengeful Stranger. Eh. Uh, Purify Dra Purifying Dragon costs too much. Uh, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 eh, no. Uh, this is a regrowth for cards, but cost three instead of two. Flashback, but it doesn't matter. Borrow time. Ah, uh, it's just banishing, banishing light, enchantment. 
but it's non-land permanent. But that's what Banishing Light was. So it's essentially the same thing. Uh, no, no. This is not Team or Battle Rage. Don't play this card. No, no. Uh, what does this do? I don't know if this is playable. Notably, it is an elemental, but you have to get it to flip. If a spell you control dealt damage flip, this actually might actually be good. Every time you a spell you control deals damage, you remove a flame, or you get a flame counter, and every time you remove, you can pay one or remove one to exile the top card and play it. So if even if it's a land, you get to play it. Notably, play play versus cast is is uh, matters. Um, that might be playable. Nothing but in standard, possibly. Um, no. All right, chat. Delver. Uh, for those who don't know what Delver of Secrets is, Delver was in original Innistrad, so it's making a comeback. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Cost 1, Human Wizard 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal it if, you, if it's an instant or sorcery. You transform Delver into Insect Apparition as instead of a Human Wizard, it's a Human Insect. 3-2 with Flying. So... I'm going to call it now. This card is not... It's not that it's not playable. It's not good. And the difference is that you're incentivized to play a lot of spells in your deck. And while you have a lot more spells in this format, in the in the form of MDFCs where you have lands and also um, there's spells within lands, but you... You don't have the spells that made Delver good in the original Innistrad that made it so good. Where you uh, you had um, you had Phyrexian mana spells like uh, Gitaxian Probe and other spells like that. And you had uh, multiple other spells that put spells back on top of your library and scryed and all that. You have MDFCs, which allow you an easier time to flip, but protecting your Delver was a lot harder to do, right? Uh, you had... Um, you had... Gut, not Gutshot. What was that card? Uh, the one... It was a Phyrexian Mana counter, counter Target spell of mana value 1, exactly 1. So you can protect it from 1 mana removal spells with that card. Now, obviously, everybody else played it because you kind of played that, that Counter War, but it helped protect Delver. And also flip because it costs nothing, so you could play it and you know play a lot less lands. In this standard format, you don't have those, so protecting your Delver is a lot harder. But you get it to flip a lot easier. So yeah, two toughness is still annoying, but it's easier to flip with the MDFCs. But also, most of the MDFCs that you're playing come to play tap, so you're not casting this on turn one. So you have to play at least 20 lands or enough land or mana count to have at least one land to make this flip. And if you flip it and have uh, an MDFC to come into play untapped or tapped, whichever ones you're playing, uh, you're basically trying to play 30 lands while also playing this. And like 20 untapped lands or whatever. So uh, in Historic and other formats that have Delver that's legal... Um, Modern Horizons has Dragon's, Dragon's Rage Channeler, which is basically a better version of Delver. Now, there are decks that are playing both, and Historic will play both. However, in Standard, I, I just don't see it. I think it's kind of like a Necessary Evil, like in Blue decks, you're probably playing it anyway. But when you're playing a Delver deck, it's a tempo-style deck because you want all your spells to cost 0, 1, 2, possibly 3. Uh, in other decks that are trying to play Delver with more with spells that cost a lot more, you're not doing that. You got to protect Delver. That's the whole point, point. and it's really hard to do when you don't have cards like in Legacy and Modern where you have like Days, Force of Will, stuff that protects Delver, right? Or one mana spells that you can like double and triple spell on that turn where you can spell Pierce, Days, pick up your land, and then be able to uh discard a land or discard a blue spell so you're like you, with one one island you can still protect delver uh in historic you have mono blue that basically plays four or 16 one drops that are all good and then you get all of the one mana and two mana counter spells with 
uh, with Archmage's Charm to play the steel game of taking one or one mana sp or uh, convert a mana cost one mana value one or less. So this is, I, in my opinion, this is more playable in modern, or excuse me, more playable in historic than standard, but it's still playable in standard. Like, you're not going to not play it, but it's just, it's not going to be good. Like, it's not going to be like an, a world beer like it was in modern or in legacy. Sunset Revelry. Revel, revelry. Chat, um, or excuse me, one white, one color sorcery. If an opponent had more life than you, gain four life. If an opponent controls more creatures than you, create two one one white creature one, create two one one white human creature tokens. If an opponent had more cards than you, draw a card. Chat timely reinforcements in standard was busted. Okay, that card was insane. It gained you six life and created three creature tokens. This card is not timely reinforcement, but it's pretty damn close because it costs one less, and it's it's still good, and it replaces itself. You get all this value and replaces it. This card's insane. And if they have two creatures or a lot of creatures, like they're going wide and you have like Seagate Stormcaller and you have like no cards left, you gain eight life, get four creature tokens and draw two cards. Now that's a lot of value Christmas land, but as a, as a card by itself, this card is insanely good. This is main deckable. Like, what? Yeah, this card's really, really good. If you thought Timely Reinforcements is good, this is probably not as good, but it's on par because it replaces itself if you have less cards. All right. Gaining four life, gaining creatures. I think if you get two out of three of these, the card was worth it. If you get all three, like, you're just, you're just golden. But yeah, this card's insane. I don't want to hear anybody complain about how bad white has been because white got all the good cards, a lot of the good cards in this set, especially this set. Uh, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, Thermal Alchemist is back, uh, but I don't think it's it's very good. People are going to try to play it, but I think you just have to play better cards than this. Uh, Champion of Alms, 1-1, one, one, First Strike, Ward 1, Disturb. What's the Disturb card do? 2-1, First Strike, Flying. Each creature you control has Ward. If, would we exile it instead? That Disturb cost of 4, that's not playable. Uh, Nebel Gast Intruder, Flash Flying, 2. No. 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 No, no, no. Uh, contortionist trope. No. Play with fire. One red instant. Play with fire deals two damage to any target if a player was dealt damage this way. Scry one. So this is basically strictly better than shock. In that if you hit a player, uh, you get to scry. And the reason why this is better than shock is because if you hit a player and you're basically trading resources and you got no resources left, and at the end of somebody's turn you shock them, uh, you get to scry. And if you scry a land when you have like five or six lands in play, it's effectively drawing a card. So this is gets you closer to killing them. Uh, this card's playable. If you're playing red, you're playing four of these, especially mono red. Uh, this is probably playable in Historic also, if you're playing Mono Red. Uh, Dissipate is back. Usually when, when they print cards that have counter spells that for three mana and do something else, in this case, Exile, uh, then it will probably see play. However, I'm not so sure this sees play over, um, I don't think this sees play over Saw It Coming. But there's going to be some contention. And in Historic, this probably sees play because it exiles. Uh, probably oversaw it coming. But yeah, this is playable. Gavany Dawnguard. If you thought that green did not get enough white cards at the three spot... Uh, I... <laughs> Two color or one colorless, two white human soldier ward one. If it's night, if it's neither night or day, it becomes day as Gavany Dawnguard enters the battlefield. 
When day becomes night or night becomes day, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card with mana value three or less from among them and put them into your hand. Uh, put the rest at the bottom of your library in any order. Three, three. Um, if you're playing against any deck that's playing night, day bound or night bound, and you get this, uh, chat this, if you flip, if you get this, this clause and you, and it, you get a card off of this, uh, you're, you've done it. And the ward one is sneaky good. Uh, and it comes down at three out of three, three, which is already raid. And if it ever, if you ever get to get day or night. Yeah. Wait. Does this happen simultaneously? If this happens simultaneously, this card's even more insane. I'm going to say it doesn't, but if it does, uh, this card's so good. At Uncommon, too. I don't know if this is playable in Historic, but this, like, all these three drops, you're going to have to decide which ones are good and which ones are bad. Which ones are worth being played and which ones aren't. I would just split them. Two of these. Two of the other. Two of the Skyclave Apparition. Two of the other Brutal Cathar. And just, just like play four or eight three drops or all twos and just see which ones are good. But yeah, this card's very good. Um, Lunark Veteran. Nah. This is basically another Soul Warden that flips. So probably this is better than Soul Warden. Oh, wait, no. So Soul Warden is any creature. This is only creatures under your control. So not better than Soul Warden. Uh, probably playable, but not really. Ominous Roost, eh. Foul Play, there's better removal spells than this. Limited All-Star, though. Abandon the post, no. Tireless hauler, no. Bounding wolf, no. Uh, no, cost too much. Infernal grasp, uh, one black, one colorless instant destroy target creature you lose two life. The condition is losing two life. I don't think this is going to matter. Uh, being able to tag any creature you want, no matter the cost, and the only thing the cost is you lose two life. This card is highly playable. Uh, this might see play in modern. But standard and historic, yeah, this is going to see play. Uh, especially in creature decks that have lifelink, where this doesn't matter. Um, so look for that, especially in historic where, like, vampires or zombies or whatever, that you can gain life and you play this with Fatal Push and this. Very, very good. Very good removal spell. Uh, no, no. Bless defense, not really. Devious cover up, counter spell, whatever. No, burn the accursed deals five damage to target creature and two. Today. If they would, oh, that costs five. Don't worry about that. Limited bramble armor. No, 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 no. Now we're in the commons. I don't think there's very many commons that are playable. Uh, path to the festival is basically. Uh, your run of the mill three, uh, three meta ramp spell. Notably, if you have three or more basic land types and you scry it as flashback. Um, so this is one of the better ones that see, that is seen play or printed. Uh, flip the switch counter target spell unless it's control place for creative. Is this good? This is close to playable. But I think you're playing the other ones like Saw Coming and Dissipate over this. Uh, if you're playing like a three or four ma or four color car or color combination, you're probably playing this over those because double blue is hard to get in a multicolor deck. Uh, it's not good enough. Limited, it's fine. Geist Wave, nah. I know some people think this card's actually good. It's just whatever. You would play the other one first. Uh, the one mana one. No, no. Plummet Reprint, again. Return to Nature, reprint. These cards are good. Duress, reprint. Um, Neonates, Rush, cost too much. Otherworldly Gaze. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put any another, a number of them in the grave. So this is a self-mill card, but it leaves it on top. You don't draw it. So if you play this with your Delver, you can 
increase the chance of flipping it on the next turn because you put the trigger on the stack and then you because this is an instant so you do that look at the top card flip it draw it homestead courage put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control it gains vigilance flashback one white sorcery probably not good enough uh, I've seen people think that this search party captain is playable. The spell costs one less to cast for each creature you've attacked with this turn. Unfortunately, you can't get this to cost two less on turn two unless you have a zero cost creature, so probably not good enough. It does replace itself, uh, but the rate, you're usually getting this at two on turn three, so probably not good enough. No, no. No. Threaten effect. Whatever. Uh, no. 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 Cyborg card. Tapping at the window. You may reveal a creature card. From yeah, whatever. Wait. Three. Three cards. You put them in the graveyard. This card's good. If you're playing a mill deck of some sort or you want that effect. So you have two of them, both in blue and green, which is kind of kind of relevant. Uh, Thraben Exorcism, ex Exile Target Spirit, or Enchantment. Unblinking Observer, uh, two colors, two one, add one only. Uh, spend mana to pay, disturb, or cast an instant or sorcery spell. If this had more toughness, this is probably fine, but eh. Uh, no, no, no. No. Flare of Faith. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If it's a human, instead it gets plus three, plus three and gains indestructible. Huh. Instant. This might be better than it than it looks. Only standard playable, probably. Um, Olivia Midnight Ambush. Two are one colorless, one black instant. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. If it's night, it gets minus 13, minus 13. Huh. This is probably more playable than it looks. Not better than Infernal Grass, but pretty close. Uh, standard playable. Limited All-Star also. Uh, no, no, no. Flavor. This card's awesome. Uh, no. No. No, 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 no. Uh, Mind of the Old Ways. Coven, you draw a card. So this might be playable. Reprint from Legends, Immolation. Uh, notably, this has implications in Historic uh, as an enchantment. Because uh, you can replay this with Luris. So you have a... Now Red has a way to kill pesky uh, creatures like Adanto Vanguard and uh, Season Hollow Blade for one mana. Uh, very playable. Also playable and standard also uh, as a removal spell. Uh, eaten Alive, one black sorcery as an additional cost. Uh, sacrifice or pay four. Uh, three colors and one black. Exile target creature or planeswalker. So a uh, better spark harvest instead of destroy it exiles. Very relevant. Uh, basically strictly better uh, because you want to exile them instead of destroy. Uh... No, no, and eh, whatever, 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 no, Pestilence Wolf, no, Ritual Guardian, no, no, no. When I saw, I read this card and then I saw the cost, I was like, no. But man, when I, I was like, oh man, how much does this cost? Does this cost two or three? No. Snarling Wolf, no, 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 no. So at first I read Candle Trap, and then I was like, eh? Because it's like buying, buying, buying the monster, but uh, if, it, if it does anything, like has activated abilities or whatever, it could still happen, so you gotta pay the Coven cost. 
but you have to have you have to have the and it can still block just it doesn't deal any damage or take damage no all right chat secrets of the key one blue instant investigate if this spell were cast from a graveyard investigate twice instead flashback one blue three colorless so in historic this is much better than it is in standard although before the spoil of memory deluge i thought this was almost on par with consider but now that we have better options this only is relevant in formats that give you artifact relevance so like in historic you have thought monitor and other stuff that has like affinity for artifacts or uh abilities that if there's an artifact in play and getting a treasure or not a treasure but an uh, a clue token and basically now you have to invest a lot of mana to get these cards uh however you're getting to draw three with this eventually so uh more uh more reasons to play this in historic than in standard but don't discount this card in standard festival crasher one red one uh another one in my top five notice most of my favorite cards outside of like champion of the parish are all blue red cards they got the most love outside of white cards but i'm not playing a lot of white uh white creature or uh decks that often uh festival crasher one red one colorless creature devil uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Festival Crasher gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. One, three. Uh, this is basically Kiln Fiend, but one extra toughness, but you don't get... You get one less power when casting spells. Um, more relevant in Historic than in Standard, although in Standard, it's still good. But I want to play this card in Historic. And I want to pair this in, uh, in the... Kiln Fiend decks, where you basically get eight kiln, eight kiln Fiends, where you get this and Kiln Fiend with, excuse me, with uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist and um, Soulscar Mage. And if you're playing white, then that's what you get. But if you're playing green, you get those red creatures with Wild Shape and Scale Up. So... I want to play this in Historic, but don't discount this in Standard either. That third toughness will be relevant. Um, no. Defense straight or defense, defense, defense straight. Is that how you say that? Def defense straight as opposed to defense, defense straight. Uh, I'm only noting this card because this is an actual word uh consider one blue uh look at the top card of your library you may put that card in your library draw card this is basically better than opt uh and the reason why is you get to surveil now obviously it doesn't have that 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 mechanic surveil uh was only to ravnica for the demir guild so unfortunately you don't get the so like if something says surveil you don't get it if you cast this card uh, and draw a card. So this card is insane. Uh, if you have this with DRC and Historic, uh, this is basically Thought Scour. And in Standard, this is a self mill card, but this also allows you to have some uh, to have some card selection. And putting it in the graveyard is a lot more relevant because you can put a flashback card in the graveyard if you don't want it. And you're basically effectively drawing a card. Uh, I like this better than Opt. And in Historic, you're playing this and Op together with Faithless Looting and DRC and Delver uh, with Arclight Phoenix and all that. So basically, all these cards come together and make that blue-red deck uh, basically streamlined. In Standard, you're playing this in basically almost every blue deck that's playing either Delver or, you know, a basically a mid-range spells type of, uh, you know, you're playing this with uh, the Thermal Alchemist, uh, scorching egg and or smoldering egg and a bunch of other spells. If you're playing a spells list, you're playing this. Uh, this is uh, has implications in other in other uh, formats like modern uh, and especially pioneer. All right, we're in the multicolor stuff. Teferi, who slows the sunset. 
Why are we getting planeswalkers that say who does something gives me remnants of Nissa who shakes the world. However, this Teferi is nowhere near that powerful. One white, one blue, two colorless, legendary planeswalker Teferi, plus one. Choose up to one target artifact, creature, up to one target creature, up to one target land. Untap those permanents you control. Untap chosen permanents you control, you gain two life. Um... Oh, if uh, tap those chosen permanents you don't control, uh, you gain two life. Uh, it's not in this. It's on the card. Uh, so tapping the stuff doesn't matter because it doesn't say they don't untap on, on, the on the opponent's next untap step. So you're not really protecting yourself by plus oneing and, oh, four starting loyalty. And... I, this is a build around card. This isn't like you just jam four of these in a control deck and just go, yeah, I'm untapping a land and protecting myself or untapping a creature. You have to be very specific about your card choices. And if I were to play this, I would do what Brian Gottlieb is doing. And I sort of noticed the same thing, but his was not five color. His was a three color deck playing the same card that I was, which is the uh, the Celeste and root, uh, root Coil plant or Root Coil something. And basically it just adds any color. And then it's also got flashback stuff. So I played five colors because you wanted to maximize the use of the flashback cards. But you don't really have to do that, right? You could just play three colors and just play all the good cards. <laughs> Uh, minus two, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. And the emblem or the uh neg or the ultimate is you get an emblem of uh untap all permanents you control during each opponent's untap step, and you draw a card during each opponent's untap step. Or each opponent's draw step, not untap. Uh the ultimate is not a win. And as I said previously, a lot of these newer planeswalkers with ultimates are not like game ending. They're pretty good, but they're not automatic game enders, right? Uh, this is a build around card, not as powerful as Red and Seven. Uh, probably the worst of the three walkers, and you have to be very, very careful about how you build this with this card. And I'm happy that Teferi. Uh, another, interestingly, all of the four mana Teferis have been bad. Not saying this card's bad, but Teferi Master of Time was a good design. Uh, but just to not see any play or fringe play, I should say this same thing. You have to play with, you have to play with creatures. You got to play with artifacts and uh, your deck has to cons be, uh, be cognizant of that. And if you're playing all of them, this essentially, you just paid one mana for it. All right. Uh, this is not his, honestly, I can see this being historic playable because uh, I just thought about this. So, historic playable only because you can play... Uh, you can play any of those green creatures or any creature that adds mana of any color. Uh, hopefully, it's a legend. And then you get to play uh, Mox Amber, right? So, Mox Amber allows you to have an artifact that you get to untap with it. And it doesn't cost you any mana, so you don't have to worry about, you know, playing it. And then you get to play this and, you know, play with, say, a Sika or uh, Incubation Druid or anything that taps to add any color. And then hopefully it's a legend. And then you can play Mox Amber and then, you know, kind of get that uh, ramp stuff with this and Nissa, And, you know, you're untapping with Mox Amber and stuff like that. So uh, I could see this being very good. Uh, the game to like, like it, you have to build around the card. Like, it's not just play four of these and, you know, go, you're off to the races. No, you have to be very cognizant of what you're doing. Arlen, Pack of Hope, or the Pack's Hope, flipping into Arlen, the Moon's Fury. Uh, one green, one red, two colors, four starting loyalty, daybound. Uh, untap, or until your next turn, you may cast creature spells as though they had flash. Each creature you control enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Negative three, create two green wolf creature tokens. This card's insane. Uh, Nightbound, or the flip side of this is Nightbound, uh, four starting loyalty, 
plus two, add a green and a red. Um, zero, at the, until end of turn, Arlen, the Moon's Fury, becomes a 5-5 five, five werewolf creature with trample, indestructible, and haste. Um, this is on power level with Ren and Seven. They're pretty much equal in how powerful they are. Um, if, if Nightbound, if it's Night, you cast this and it, 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 it enters play as the Nightbound. Just so we're just so you understand, and then um, and then the the front side gives you uh, it protects itself, and the plus one on both sides are very relevant, right? So the adding the ramping to six after you cast this, if you if you flip it, and also it becomes a threat. So. Both sides are relevant. Both sides create threats. Both sides, uh, their pluses. Man, this card's good. Very good. Uh, your green red decks are probably playing a lot of these. Two to four at minimum. Two, probably three. Uh, even historic, this might see play because it's doing everything you want. Controls the battlefield. Uh, gives you flash against the control decks. Uh, turns into a threat at night, so they can't kill it. They have to exile it. Yeah, uh, this card's very good. One of the one of the premier mythics in the set. Um, where are we at here? Singarda, Champion of Light. Uh, two white, one colorless, one green. Legendary Angel, Flying Trample. Uh, human Jew Control get plus one plus one four four. Coven whenever or Coven whenever Singarda. Or Sigar Sigarda attacks if you control three or more creatures with different powers. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a human creature card from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest of the body in your library in any order or in random order. So um if you're playing specifically a human low to the ground ones and twos, this is better in my opinion. Then Collected Company. Collected Company incentivizes you to play threes. And this gives all of your ones and twos that are humans bigger. So like Thalia's Lieutenant gets bigger. Your Esper Sentinels and Historic get bigger. And then in Standard, you got uh, you got a lot of humans that are ones and twos that get bigger. Right? And then if they're werewolves and they're still humans, they still get the plus one, plus one. So this has applications in all formats, not just standard. And 4444 is on rate, and uh, it's an angel. So if you're playing angels and humans together, this has a lot of a lot of relevancy. But this card's very good. Uh, why do I keep moving back and it keeps moving me down more? The art in this set is just amazing, also. Um, sorcery, Ephemerate, it just has flashback if it was a creature under your control. Uh, Non-legendary, by the way. Uh, enters, enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Wait. Exile target create non-legendary creature, then return it to the battlefield under owner's control. If it enter under your control... Yeah. If it enter into your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Otherwise, tap it. Uh, so, sorcery, flashback. I don't know. Wish this was an instant, but I understand why it's not. It's probably playable. More playable in historic than in standard. Um, what's up, kitty? Come on. Angel Fire Ignition. Uh, one red, one white sorcery. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. It gains vigilance, trample, lifelink, indestructible, and haste until end of turn. Flashback two colorless, one white, one red. Um, I want to play with this in historic. I don't think this is good enough in standard, but in historic, it's cute with Dreadheart Arcanist and all of your Kiln Fiend and Wizards and all that stuff. 
And notably, if you're playing with, say, Harmonic Prodigy and you have your Magecraft guys or Magecraft creatures and you cast this on curve, uh, that creature gets friggin' huge and it doesn't die and it has Trample and Lifelink and it has Vigilance. So I think this has more application in, in Historic than Standard, but don't discount this in Standard by giving, you know, whatever creature and it has Flashback. So... Um, I like this in a very mid rangey type where the lifelink and the indestructible and the haste matters, but in more the haste matters in the, uh, in the flashback more than playing this on curve only in historic and standard. I don't think this is playable in any other format. Um, Florian Voldaren Scion. 3-3 three, three for 3 first strike Vampire Noble. Vampire decks are playing this. Uh, at the beginning of post-combat main phase, look at the top X cards of your library where X is the total amount of life an opponent, an opponent lost this turn. Exile one of those cards and put the rest in the bottom of your library in, any, in a random order. You may play the exile cards so you can get a land if you need it. Uh, notably, this is very, very awkward. Uh, not, not conducive on turn 3. Because you're not playing extra lands and you can't cast a spell that you that you get on the turn you play this. So probably you're playing this on th on four. But three three for three that has first strike is still playable on curve. You just don't get what you would get. Uh wouldn't be able to play it unless you have a way to play extra lands. Uh probably not play probably not playable in historic, but uh because mostly vampires are black, white, or mono black. And splashing multiple colors for vampires that don't really do much. Your your contention on three is planeswalkers and other stuff. Um, Denic Pious Apprentice. I don't like this card. Like, yeah, whatever. You just play Weathered Runestone, and yeah. Um. Catilda, Dawnheart, Prime, one green, one white. Uh, legendary creature, human warlock, protection from werewolves. Uh, human creatures you have have tapped add any mana of, or add one mana of any of this creature's colors. Uh, four green and a white tap. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, one, one. So this gives Cryptolith right. But it doesn't add any mana of any color. It's just the color that the creature has. And um, this also gives itself tap for those colors. So this is basically tap for green or white. Because it is a human. And uh, yeah. So I don't like that you have to tap to give this. But this being a 1-1 one -one is kind of annoying. Like, why couldn't this be a 2-2? Two -two? I don't understand. Protection from werewolves is kind of relevant because there will be a green-red werewolf deck. So this could just block it all day, but still dies to anything. This is probably fine. It's probably playable. Green-white is making a bunch of counters and a bunch of creature tokens. And with this having... Yeah, this is probably going in... Like, this probably just slots into the green-white deck that's playing a bunch of creature tokens. And then... Uh, you play this, then play the, or play the, uh, another spell that gives you two creature tokens, and then you play this, and then now you have, uh, a double spell that turn, and then notably Clarion Spirit, I think, no, it makes spirit tokens, but there's another thing that, uh, if you, if you, uh, there's ways to make human creature tokens, essentially. Alright. Siphon Insight. I don't think this card's playable. Uh, I know it's a rare and I know what it does. I don't think the card's playable. I think you just play other stuff. It's annoying. Uh, just play Expressive Iteration. Yeah, I understand that you you get the opponent stuff and you can spend mana as though or any color, but it's only one card, so you're not you're not gaining any advantage here. And you hope it's not a land. Um, dire Strain Rampage. It's just... It's a moto spell that has flashback. I don't think this is as good as people think it is. You're more in line of using it for destroy enchantment or artifact. And if you destroy and if you destroy your own land, it ramps you, but just I I guess. 
it's better than Haro essentially, but not better than Haro because it's a sorcery. So I don't know. The modality gives it some play, but the fact that it's a sorcery and if you hit an opponent's stuff, it's like playing a three mana assassin's trophy on non creatures. Like what? All right. Uh, old sticky fingers. X black red or black green horror legendary creature. Whenever you cast a spell, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards. Put all those creature cards revealed this way to the into your graveyard. Then put the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. All sticky fingers power and toughness are equal to the uh, are each equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. I don't think this card's any good. Like, if you play this on two, you hope the top two cards are creatures and you're trying to kill creature cards anyway. Like, I, I don't know. Not playable in Historic. Yeah, I'm I'm reserving skeptic skepticism for this card because I don't, I don't think it's any good. Can't stay away. One black, one white sorcery return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains if this creature would die, exile it instead. Flashback three, white, black. Um, this isn't on Earth, but it's pretty damn close. And Luris decks now have a way to buy it back with not just Culligan's Command. And you don't have to be in red anymore. You can be in white or excuse me, uh, you can be in white or black. So now you have a way to just play two of these or one. And you have a way to buy back your Luris if, like, you call against Commander or return it with another way. And then it gets discarded or dies again. And then now you can return it and... Or return a creature and then flash back it back. So, like, you have multiple ways to get it back. Which is more than playable. I think this card's good. Uh, in Historic, anyway. And then in Standard... Um, with as good as the three drops are... Uh, this is probably just playable as a two of just the return stuff. And then flashback is still... Yeah, this card's good. Uh, and the fact that the art has all kitties, also good. S plus art. Uh, Galvatic iteration is just another dual, dual spell or whatever. Copy target spell with flashback. Uh, wake to slaughter. Uh, you choose two target creatures and an opponent chooses one. Storm Skrelix. Uh, this is a more or more expensive, excuse me, more expensive uh, Igna, Ig, 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 Igma Drake. Every time you cast an instant or sorcery spell, uh, Storm Skrelix gets plus two plus zero. Notably, this is a uh, instant of sorcery cost one less to cast. I don't think this is good enough though. Witherhorn blessing. Uh, one green, one blue sorcery. Put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature you control. Tap up to one target creature you don't control, and that creature doesn't untap during its controller's on this tap step. One uh, flashback. Uh, one green, one blue, one colorless. This is probably fine. Way better in limited. I don't see this being played in any older formats either. Uh, could you stop, Kitty? Uh, this card I don't think is playable. You got many other ways. It becomes night. That might be relevant. Uh, is this the one? No, this is not the one. Hi, Fat Man. Right of Oblivion. One white, one black sorcery. As an additional cost to this spell, sacrifice a non-land permanent. Exile target non-land permanent. Flashback, one white, one black, two colors. I want to play this in Historic just because there's a card in Historic that I think is, is one of my favorite cards of all time. And it's not good, but I want to do it with this. And that is Demonic Pact, where I can either sacrifice it or I can give it with Heartless Offering or Harmless Offering. But this gives me another way to get rid of it. And it doesn't cost that much. And if they counter it, I can still flash it back. Could you get off my hand, please? Thank you. Go. Uh, in a, in standard, you can if you're casting a lot of um, a lot of spells that give you a way to get 
creature tokens if you're playing like an Esper mid-range deck with like Poppet Stitcher or Sedgemore Witch, or you're playing Jadar in your deck where you're not playing blue and you're getting a creature every time, then this allows you to exile any permanent that's pesky for you. So this is probably playable in both formats. Um, I'm not sure it's playable in Modern or more, but this might see play in Pioneer, but in Historic and Standard, I can see this seeing play a lot. Root Coil Creeper. One green, one blue, plant, whore. Tap, add a color. Okay. Fat Man, you are rubbing against my hand. You need to move. Chunky. Chunky kitty. He weighs 17 and a half pounds. Root, root Coil Creeper. One blue, one green, plant, horror, creature. 2-2. Two, two, add Tap to add one mana of any color. Tap to add two mana of any one color. Spend this mana to cast spells from your graveyard. One blue, one green, tap, exile, root coil, creeper, return target card with flashback you own from exile to your hand. Um, this is one of the better creature or mana rock creatures, and it adds any color, and I'm playing this in basically every ramp deck that's playing Teferi, uh, and that's where you want to play it. And then you're also playing this with flashback cards, like Memory Deluge and uh, any of the other flashback cards. Uh, this card is way playable, and your three color deck would like it because you're playing this and Celeste and those basically add any color you want and getting value out of this to either cast cards out of your graveyard or getting them back uh, for value is just a net positive and a lot of um, a lot of value and a lot of upside and you can tap it for mana, do stuff and then untap it with Teferi and attack or vice versa however you want to do it. But essentially, with Teferi, you can tap this for two... You can get four mana out of this to cast a... Um, to cast any flashback card. And on average, there's not... There's not any flashback card that has three colors in it. So you can tap this and add red, for example, and then untap it with Teferi and then add white. And then you can cast... You know, uh, Sacred Flame, uh, the the lower helix, and uh, the one card that we just did. That's a that's a four uh, angelic ignition or angel fire ignition. And yeah, this card seems really good. Not like oh my god, it's busted. But you're playing this in virtually any deck that you're playing multiple colors in because it just does everything. And you're playing it with Teferi. Probably not playable in Historic, but close enough if you're going to play Sacred Fire was the other one. This is basically smaller Helix. Uh, helix cost, but it deals two, gain two, and has flashback. Playable in Standard. Probably not playable in Historic, but... Because um, you have literal Lightning Helix. Fat Man. Why are you going near my hand that's on the mouse? Huh? Uh, this card's not... You made me... Alright. Hungry for more. Probably not good enough. Curse Cobble. Just makes basically a uh, an army. Like one big giant zombie token with Decay. Or with Menace, not Decay. Eh. Dawnheart Wardens. What is this? Creatures you can curl... Nah, it's, I would much rather have a plus... Eh. Sacrifice fodder, but eh, you gotta pay for it. Uh, Faithful Mending. One white, one blue, instant, you gain two life, draw two cards, then discard two cards, flashback, one white, one blue, one colorless. So this is Faithless Looting for two instead of one, and it costs, and it has flashback. Uh... Faithless Looting wasn't that good in Standard, but it's obviously good enough in every format it's ever been in. However, it, this costs two, and the Gain Life Clause matters, but this is card disadvantage. So you gotta use, you gotta find a reason to get card disadvantage for a card like this. 
Now, obviously, this is an instant. You can do that at the at the end step, but you got to have a reason to have this specific card in your deck. Just having it to draw cards and discard cards is not netting you any cards. In fact, you're losing a card to 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 do this. So it's a three for two, uh, and then when you flash it back, it's a four for three, at the end. Uh, I don't know where this fits, but I have more applications for it in historic than I do in standard. But I, you know, it, it'll see play. I just, I you got to find out where you want it, where you want it. And anytime there's an effect like this, it's always played. Is playing standard when there was careful study. It saw playing standard when it was faithless looting. Obviously, we all know the pedigree it has in older formats, and in historic and in standard, this having the same effect is gonna see play. Um, putting your disturbed stuff in the graveyard matters, so you're not effectively losing cards because you'll get to get them back. So, yeah, this is fine. Uh. Vampire Socialite. One black, one one red. Vampire Noble. Menace. 2-2. Two, two. Whenever Vampire Socialite enters the battlefield, if an opponent lost life this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on each vampire you control. As long as an opponent lost life this turn, each other vampire you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. So essentially, this gives you bigger Bloodthirst. This has Bloodthirst when it comes into play if you dealt damage. And then every time you deal damage, if you cast a vampire, it's just bigger. So everything has bloodthirst. Vampire decks are going to play this uh, in standard, the black red decks. Not sure if this is playing historic because there's better vampires to be playing, especially in white where they're three power instead. Uh, but you have very, very good vampires at one. So if you deal damage, this is coming in at three. And... So maybe this is playable in, stand in Historic, but you're not playing white, you're playing red instead. But Rakdos mana is terrible, so uh, the black and white mana is better, but the vampire decks that are being played in Historic are monocolor. They're mono black snow to get access to Faceless Haven and other cards. So I don't know if this is going to see as much play in, in Historic as it will in Standard, but don't discount this card, especially if we're getting better mana uh, as, the, uh, as we filter in more sets. Keswick's Naturalist. Uh, one red, one green. Human Werewolf, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever Keswick's Naturalist attacks, add one red or one green. Uh, until end of turn, you don't lose you don't lose mana as... Or, man, I can't read. Until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. Uh, Daybound. And then the backside is Lord of the Ovenwald. Uh, three, three werewolf, other werewolves and wolves you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever this attacks, same thing. Uh, you get one green or one red. So this is going to be played in the green red decks. And this gives you a way to add more mana when you attack. And then that one mana will be spent on like play with fire. Or if you have, uh, an, an additional land, now you get to play a two mana removal spell or an additional two mana creature or, uh, if you don't cast anything on the turn, uh, this is basically a ramp spell. So you can play Arlen if this doesn't get blown, or even if it does, who cares, All right? So uh, every green-red deck is probably playing four of these, and if it flips, that's just more value for you. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, might see playing Historic, unsure, because there's a lot of twos that are good. Uh, Arcane Infusion is just Impulse with Flashback, uh, for instance, in Sorceries. You have Expressive Iteration, which is much better than this card. Uh, blade Stitch Scab. Uh, one black, one... One black, one... I was going to say green. One black, one blue zombie soldier. Uh, other zombies you control get plus one, plus zero. Two, three. So this is a half a lord, but still good enough. And you have a lord in standard, and you have multiple lords in historic. So zombie decks now have a good one drop and have another lord at a two drop spot. So zombies, the problem in historic specifically is their two drops were horrible, like terrible. Now you have the adversary, you got this guy, you got white, you got, you got your two one drops, you got your couple of two drops, and then your three drops are all lords, right? And you don't have to play Liliana's Mastery 
and then you get to play Liliana, which ma- which which was made for all this. So essentially, this set probably pushed zombies in historic playable. Not probably tier one, but probably competitive enough to where you're allowed to play. Uh, you know, splashing blue for this card, and then you got some sideboard slots for some counter magic to apply pressure and have some spell pierce, mystical dispute, some some counter magic action, memory lapse stuff like that, and then. You got all the lords and the Liliana Planeswalker from M20 that is uh, zombie centric, and then you have the the one zombie that uh, that's a uh, uh, Liliana's mastery on itself, which is the adversary. So basically, you're playing Crypt Breaker, uh, two or four Crypt Breaker, four Champion of the Parish, this, um, and then probably yeah, four of the 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 mythic, uh, the adversary. And then four Diagraph Colossus, four um, four Lord of the Accursed, four Death Baron, and then uh, some removal, like six removal spells, and then two to three Lilianas, and that's the deck, right? Which I will build here on Aether Hub. Definitely playable in both formats. Uh, join the dance. One white, one green sorcery. Create two one one white human creature tokens. Flashback three green white. As I said, the other legend that's also green white. This pairs with it, and then you also have all the other green white stuff that goes with it. So basically, all the two color allied colors have stuff, even the enemy colors. Um, and getting human creature tokens is relevant. Uh, probably not playable in historic. Because traditionally the tokens decks were red white, so splashing for a third color or going to green makes almost little sense, because the red the red uh, creature token makers were good, and this is a sorcery. Half of the white spells or the red spells are instants, so. Uh, Pithy needle is back. For those who don't know what Pithy needle is, it's a one mana artifact that when it enters the battlefield, choose a card name and activated abilities of that of the sources that you named cannot be activated unless they're mana abilities. So you name Planeswalkers, like Teferi. You have to name the specific card. But any card you name, you can't activate them. You can't activate loyalty abilities. You can't activate any of their stuff. But if they're mana abilities, you can activate them. So for example, if you if you name, say, Chromatic Sphere, that does nothing because they can still activate it because it's a mana ability. Uh, the Celestis, which is the card that you want to pair with Teferi, three, legendary artifact. If it's neither night or day, it becomes day. As this enters the battlefield, tap for any mana of any color. Uh, three, tap. If it's night, it becomes day. Otherwise, it becomes night. So if you tap this and it was nothing, right, but it is, it'll be day. But if you tap this, it'll become night. Activate only as a sorcery. And then whenever this becomes night or night, when it becomes when day becomes night or night becomes day, you gain a life. You may draw a card if you do discard a card. Uh, there's a lot of text on this card, but all that really matters is that you can do this multiple times because you have Teferi and you're untapping this. So your core deck with Teferi and standard is Celeste and Root, uh, Root Coil Creeper and Teferi in this. And then you fill out your deck with other stuff. Uh, this is not playable in, in Historic or any other older format, just standard. Uh, that's not playable. That's not playable. That's not playable. That's not playable. Jack Lantern is an interesting card uh, that you can. Uh, it's a um, sort of like a, a smash together between Scrabbling Claws and um, and Chromatic Sphere, except you don't draw a card if you add if you add a color, but you do draw a card if you exile a card from the graveyard, and you got to sacrifice it, and you have to exile it. Uh, to get the mana. Notably, there's a card called Silver Bolt. Uh, one mana artifact, three tap sacrifice, deals three damage to target creature. If you do this to a werewolf, it exiles it. So, you can effectively do this to Arlen. Right? Because if, you, if it becomes a creature, it has indestructible, but this exiles it. Or no, excuse me, it says destroy. Never mind. Forget what I said. Um, this card's terrible. Uh, I'm not even gonna read it. For a mythic, it's like gets that Westvale Abbey stuff, but the backside is so bad. Like you have to activate this as a sorcery. 
You can't sacrifice it as an instant. You got to do all... Like, there's so much investment in this card. And, like, it dies to everything. Like, yeah, it's got a 7 toughness, but it's an artifact. So it gets Prismari commanded. And, like, it can get bounced if it's a land. Like, it's an artifact, but... Like, there's too much that goes on in this card. And it, it's too slow. Obviously, the lands, these will be played regardless of how slow they are. The only contention is that they don't come into play untapped on turn two, but who cares? Field of Ruin is reprinted. I'm I, I'm shocked that they did not reprint Ghost Quarter, but Field of Ruin is, is slightly better in that aspect because you both get a land. Uh, and then we got Evolving Wilds reprint, and then the lands are good. But that's the entire set. Um, like I said, most of the cards that I want to play with are, uh, they're blue or red, like Smoldering Egg, Consider, Delver, Memory Deluge, um, the, what's that card? Not Burn Down the House, Sunstreak Phoenix, Moonvale Regent, uh, Tainted Adversary because it's a, because it's a, uh, a zombie, Pop it Stitcher. Yeah, there's a lot of cards here. But majority of them are blue or red. And then obviously, this is a mythic heavy set, right? Some of these cards that are rare should be mythics because of what they do. But a lot of these mythics are very good. Like this adversary, they're all playable. You should craft them if the ones that you're going to play with. Um, Moon Veil Region is playable. Consuming Blob is playable. Enduring Angel is playable. Poppet Stitcher is playable. Sunstreak Phoenix. Renin 7. Teferi. Arlen. Meat Hook Massacre. Um, what was the other mythics that were down there? I'm blanking. Sagarda. Yeah. All those are playable. I don't think I missed anything. I don't think any of these other cards. Oh, there was one I missed. Rite of Harmony. One green, one white instant. Whenever a creature or enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, this turn, draw a card. Uh, two green, white. So, I don't know what you're doing with this in historic. Or, excuse me. I don't know what you're doing with this in standard, but in older formats, being able to basically get glimpse of nature for creatures or enchantments is relevant. And with Hermit Druid, or not Hermit Druid, is it Hermit Druid? One of the elves that's not banned, that basically untaps, you got to return a card, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in Historic, you got elves, and also you have uh, the Green White Enchantress deck, but you're, you're already cycling through your deck a lot, so this probably is not good enough. But to churn through your deck to con just continuously... Uh, draw cards from elves in multiple formats is relevant and uh, casting an instant with stuff that gives you creatures also relevant like Sedgemore Witch or Poppet Stitcher now granted that's three colors but you can probably play a three color deck because there's so many so many lands that gives you multiple colors like the pathways and uh, mm -mm. and this also has flashbacks so you can do it twice yeah, this card's very playable. But that was really one of the only ones that I skipped over that I thought was actually good enough. Alright. But that's the end of that. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think are very good or what, what you think I missed that I, that I overvalued or undervalued or what you're looking to play for. But until then, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, the... And the uh, social media stuff will be in the description uh, in the description below. So those are in the Twitch. Uh, we'll be doing the deck building uh, in the YouTube. Look for the decks uh, that'll be talked about, uh, deck decks and whatever. But we're gonna do we're gonna do some deck building for uh, for some historic decks because uh, standard is almost done. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna do some we're gonna do him some historic deck building. So uh, if you like to be on live stream or watch a live stream uh you got twitch.tv slash john ramos gaming and we are we have a schedule thursday through saturday nights and yeah so until then i will see you next time and thanks for watching